Hi, and welcome to my video on how to get and keep mot yourself motivated to pursue ADAT certification, but actually anything in your life that requires long effort over time and has longer benefits in your life. So today we're going to talk a little bit different, take a little bit different angle and talk about psychology of the ADAT certification and generally tax certification and what are the driving forces that may uh, help you to get to this end result of being ADAT certified. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. Mike Israetel, who is the uh, professional sports um, um, professor. He is um, popular because of Renaissance Periodization Organization and the, um, and the YouTube channel. You can go there and watch a lot of videos. It's focused on sports and how you keep yourself motivated to be dieting or growing muscle, whatever other goals, fitness goals you have. This is a very strong resource, very science-based. And there he talks a lot about motivation and long-term success. And um, I will be using some of his concepts and some of his ideas and apply them to our field to show you how those can help you be successful in ADAT. So what makes ADAT special is that it takes at least two to three years to be fully ADAT certified and it requires a lot of motivation to get you there. But motivation is just one force. So let's talk about adherence first. Adherence is something that is bigger than motivation. Adherence is uh, getting involved into ADAT certification or any other uh, longer term uh, certification that you may want to pursue and sticking to it. So how do you get started, what motivates and triggers you to start and then what keeps you running and keeps you motivated? So motivation is just a part of it and there are other ideas that we will explore today. Um, and adherence, therefore, is crucial for long-term success in any goal-oriented activity, basically. So your goal is, I want to get full, fully ADAT certified. That's your goal. Long, it's long-term goal and long-term success. So you cannot do this in like a month or a week. That's why it requires a little bit different strategy comparing to shorter goals that you may have. And it goes beyond initial motivation, focusing on consistent and sustainable action, meaning learning and passing exams. And understanding the difference between adherence and motivation is key to achieve your long-term objectives. Uh, when I was taking a DAT certification, I didn't know that, but I felt a lot of those forces in me. And I just want to demystify, demystify them a little bit for you so that you could manage yourself and your uh, mind to uh, get to the result with a minimum effort required or that like minimum from what uh, can get you there basically. So let's first quickly go through the core concepts and then we will dive into each of them in a little bit more detail. So adherence comprise of six main concepts or constructs. The first one is inspiration actually. So before we go into motivation, before we uh, before motivation starts playing a significant role, we need to actually get started. And inspiration is often an initial spark that gets you started. Motivation is more enduring a desire to achieve your goals, which we will talk in a minute in the context of ADAT. Then the intention is basically your plan. Uh, the discipline is something that helps you in those lower moments to stick to your plan. Habit is something that can automate your ADAT preparation and um, r continuous learning. And then passion is something which is a very strong force, which we'll explore at the end. Um, <clears throat> pretty exciting, stay uh, with me, uh, because that those concepts can substantially help you in your life, not just ADAT certification. Um, so inspiration, let's start with inspiration. Inspiration is the initial trigger or spark that motivates your action. So um, what is that? Like when you, have seen that someone else, your colleague, got ADAT certified and they're publishing on LinkedIn that like, or, or just sending an email to the team that, hey guys, I've got ADAT certified. It was a long journey, but I finally did it. And here is like, here is um, how I'm happy about it. That may trigger you, your inspiration to also pursue it, right? So you're like, okay, cool. 
I also want to do ADAT that because it seems that it's a cool thing. Or for example, you see the different type of success story like I've got promotion because I've got ADAT certified or uh, because I'm very strong tax professional or I've got this exciting role um, in a new uh, or a new job. Or maybe you just visited the some seminar or webinar or watched other videos about ADAT that I have on my channel and you're like, cool, I want to be ADAT certified. This is the inspiration. <clears throat> the problem with inspiration is like it's very short living, right? So you like you you've watched that video or you visited that webinar or you read the story and you're like, yes, I want that. But then the next day you're just it just disappears basically, so you just forget about it and move on in your life. Uh, that's why inspiration is very cool to use, very good to use to start your ADHD journey. So just like when you feel inspired, <clears throat> that's a good moment to, to jump on this journey. To like, if you feel inspiration, you're like, yeah, I want that. And you have other forces that we will discuss in a second that will keep you running. That's a good moment to actually register for ADHD certification and start like to, to, to just like ensure that you committed to it. Um, the next stronger force, um, though a little bit less, I would say, uh, sparking, but still very strong force, is your motivation. So motivation is a deeper, more enduring force that drives you towards goals. So for example, you are motivated to continue your professional growth because you want to develop as tax professional and you want to grow in this career to do more complex projects. Uh, that's one type of motivation. The other one can be recognition. So you want your colleagues and your boss to recognize that, yes, you are ADAT certified. You are now a stronger tax professional and um, everyone will be cheering and respecting you. That's also pretty good motivation, I, I believe. Um, or you have this desire to move to a different type of role and you want to um, a particular job that requires certification. Um, that's that's another type of motivation that you can feel and that's cool that's good you need to have motivation actually because inspiration wouldn't get you too far um and it's much more consistent than the inspiration inspiration just starts and then vanishes typically motivation is something that doesn't disappear that fast right so you it's, it's you still want the next day you still want to be professionally developing you still want that role you still want recognition that motivation force is longer term and stronger uh, the problem is that it still fluct it still fluctuates, right? So uh, today you're very focused on this motivation and you feel it strongly, but the next day you may be some other priorities pop up, some shorter term things um, at work or in, in a family, and then your motivation is just like going lower, right? So it's like becomes a little bit weaker, and it may be this motivation may be not enough for you to continue the preparation. So. Um, so you've got the inspiration, you got into the journey, you feel some motivation, you start learning, but then something else pops up and then you're like, yeah, then motivation goes down and um, the, on the other day you are not preparing for the exam. Then you again feel this motivation a little bit stronger and then you start preparing and then it, you're again losing it. So just using motivation is a little bit problematic. And the main, the main thing that helps you to... Uh, to capitalize on the motivation is something different, which we'll discuss in a moment. That's how it looks like, right? So you've got the inspiration, you commit it, your motivation is there, and then motivation starts fluctuating, and maybe the level of motivation on some days is so low, or even some weeks is so low that you're not actually preparing and not going forward with your ADHD journey. <coughs> next. What's next? The next is um, intention. Intention it is your plan, basically. So a commitment to a specific actionable things that you will be doing on a daily basis that transforms your motivation into a roadmap for achieving your final ADAT goal. Um, so motivation is fluctuating and intention helps you to navigate that motivation, to know what you're actually supposed to do. For example, um, I will be my plan is this. I have those 18 items I need to um, focus on in terms of syllabus of the exam. I will break it down into smaller topics. I know the resources that I need to read. 
Um, I will do this topic on this week and then the next week I will focus on that topic. That's how many hours I'm going to dedicate to that. That's all of your intentional plan. And that's where courses are especially helpful because if you look at my course, for example, on ADAT preparation, it gives you the whole intention plan basically. So that's like, those are all the modules you need to cover. Those are all the videos you need to read, uh, to watch. Those are all the books or, or, or pieces of the book you need to read. Those are the quizzes, those are the case studies. So the plan is there, you don't need to think about that that much if you take the professional course. Uh, you need to include their clear objectives, timelines and milestones, as we discussed. Uh, how intention looks like on the group diagram, it's not actually what you're doing, right? Intention is a supporting mechanism to support your other forces, but it's just this line which shows like what you are supposed to do, how adherence translates from just fluctuating feelings into actionable uh, plan. Um, then the next one is very important, especially in longer term goals like preparation for an exam, discipline. Discipline is something that takes you through fluctuations. That's where you need to use your willpower to adhere to your plan, especially when you feel low motivated. When you're always motivated and you're like on high motivation, there is like motivation can be crazily strong for some specific reason because you want a particular role by a particular date or you need money and to get money you need to get the role and to get the role you need to pass the exam. That motivation may be sufficient and then um, you are just going with the first three forces or concepts may be enough. But most of us are not like that, right? So you ha need to have some discipline to commit to that goal. And the easiest way which I find useful for um, how I translate discipline is a particular action that I'm doing every day, no matter what. So for example, is you need, I will study every day for 30 minutes. That's my minimum a level of commitment that I'm going to do. That's my discipline. I will be doing it no matter what, and that's it. Um, the problem with discipline, or or where it, it it gets problematic, is that it uses your willpower, and will willpower is a fin finite resource. So, um, if you overcommit, your plan is over ambitious, and uh, you may need to let's say study for three hours every day three hours every day for a special longer period of time is a lot and you will have this your willpower may run out you may run out of your willpower to pursue the exam or certification to prepare for the exam or certification because it's too much right so don't overcommit that's why it's important to start preparation early and um setting more more rely more more like realistic goals that you know that your willpower will be sufficient for it is a path to success um how it looks like so it's basically we have this um intention our plan we have motivation which fluctuates on some days our motivation is low and therefore we are filling it in with our um, discipline or willpower and we are breaching those motivation um, fluctuations with it. Um, the next one is building a habit. And I think building habits is a bigger topic, obviously. We will not go into that in uh, too much detail. But um, going back to the discipline, so we discussed the discipline with like, things like study every day for 30 minutes using your willpower is um, something that m may drive you to success. Habit is translating discipline into something automatic where you don't need to use your willpower to actually do the action. For example, you may build a habit of studying every day for 30 minutes, not just for the ADA, ADAT exam preparation. Yes, for the next, let's say, half a year, you will be spending your habit of learning on ADAT, but you will build a, a habit of studying um, that you will then later on refocus on other areas. Let's say you're now a professional transfer pricing advisor and you will be studying sales and marketing for professional services firms after you pursue ADAT exam. And then this habit will serve you because you can just use those 30 minute blocks every day to just change the content um, and refocus it on something else. And then building this habit is something that takes out all of the 
willpower thing, right? So you just automate it to a level where you don't feel like I really need to like a willpower to start learning today because that's just things that I'm doing every day. I'm just every day I spend 30 minutes. I put a time uh, timer every morning and I just read for 30 minutes, for example. And then you don't need to use the willpower. For example, um, are you motivated to clean, brush your teeth, right, every day? So probably not. You don't feel like you're motivated to do it. Uh, do you have like a specific... In inspiration to do to brush your teeth probably also not right it's just an automatic habit that you don't need to use any willpower to force yourself to do it so that's the level that we want to take it and again building habits is something bigger but that's something that helps you in your life um, over time how it looks like is that you're basically your motivation is still fluctuating but um, it's very easy with a habit to stick to your plan. So that's the idea, right? You just like use less and less willpower every time. And then the last one is something that like you don't really need, especially for ADAT preparation specifically. But if you are passionate about being a tax professional, that's something that you really feel strong about you wake up every day, that's part of your identity, and you're like, yes, I'm a tax professional, I'm very well, I know tax, international tax very well, um, everyone knows that I'm a tax professional, and for example, in the ADAT context, um, to be a better uh, tax professional, I need to pass ADAT certification, and then you just use this passion to international tax and being tax professional as a driving force for your exam preparation, for example. So it makes the process of learning enjoyable, right? So you you not just learn it because you have to do it because there, you use discipline or you just have a habit of learning, but you really, when you read it and you know, discover new tax concepts and you can apply them in practice, you feel more and more motivated and passionate about it because you like the subject matter. You see how it changes your life and how it enhances your identity of tax professional. Um, it's not essential for everyone. So, for example, I never felt extremely strong about my identity as a tax professional. Um, I think I'm more on transfer pricing field. So, yes, for transfer pricing, it was relevant. But I also had to pass other exams and at that point of like I didn't feel that I will be applying those concepts too actively and I never seen myself as I will be like tax professional for the, my whole career and that's something I'm very passionate about. So I never use really passion in this context. But if you are, that's a superpower that you can use. How it looks like is that like your adherence is growing over time and you it's easier and easier for you to learn and study tax and you are building those skills over time and then you're just progressing in your career very fast, you become well-known and then it, it's, it's a loop which helps you. Um, the last thing I will mention here is that, um, as I discussed, so the intention is important and the plan is important and having materials really helps to support all of your willpower and discipline and in my course, if you, um, if you need the support, you will get it with um, my Start Tax Education resource. You go there, there are a lot of free resources that you can use. If you want to prepare for the ADAT exam and spend substantially less time, therefore use less of your willpower, basically, um, and you want to increase substantially your chances and keep you more motivated to study, um, you may consider taking my online ADAT course for transfer pricing. 98% of students who take this course pass the exam on the first try. Thank you and bye for today.